So I'm usually a pretty big wuss when it comes to horror movies, but I know there's a lot of great films in this genre, so I'm trying to be brave and branch out and watch some of them. So today I'm going to watch the 1985 Stephen King adaptation, Silver Bullet. I believe it's about werewolves. That's all I really know. Uh, I don't know the cast. I don't know if Stephen King was involved in directing or if this is just an adaptation or anything like that. I've seen a few other uh, Stephen King adaptations that I've really enjoyed. I haven't read a ton of his books, so I definitely need to do that. If you have any other suggestions for horror movies you think I should watch, please comment below. And I do have horror movie themed notebooks for sale. The link will be below as well. And if you want to have a say in what movies or TV shows I watch, be sure to join Patreon. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. Yeah, I definitely think this is going to be werewolves. I love 80s movies, so I'm very excited to watch this. Okay, I definitely recognize his name. Corey Haim? Awesome! And Megan Follows? What? She was in um, a Canadian classic called Anne of Green Gables. I know Stephen King was a teacher before he became, or while he was trying to uh, get a start being a writer, and I noticed schools are usually incorporated a lot in his uh, content. Clear. <sighs> Won't you try? Oh, okay. Is this, um, it's a different title, the movie from the book. So is this true to the book? I haven't read it, so comment below and let me know. Oh. Decapitations right off the start. Oh my god. The killing had begun. Yeah, no kidding. The county coroner concluded that Arnie had passed out on the tracks. There wasn't enough evidence to. Oh my god. And like, it looks well done. Like, that was super gross, but like, it looked accurate. <laughs> I love in Stephen King uh, adaptations how he adds so much backstory into the character. And my brother Marty was 11. We'd like to get things started now. <laughs> and I love how he has this kind of like dark view of like suburban life and everything. And it's just, I just feel like it's like relatable and like the way, I like the way he views things, even though they're very dark and twisted usually. Look alive! <laughs> Uh, so cruel. Yeah, that's definitely her from uh, Anna Green Gables, which I think also came out in the 80s. Look, you know we had this conversation before. Sorry, babe. I have to have some help, but it's I your oven, but it ain't my bun. You got oh my, well, that's one way to put it. That's, uh, oh no. I know a lot of, um, they mentioned the name of the town, but they didn't mention the state. So comment below, does this take place in Maine? I know a lot of Stephen King um, novels and adaptations take place in Maine. So was the book take place there or was it filmed there? Here. Oh, that was nice of him. I mean, you shouldn't have done the prank in the first place, but still, it's nice that he's trying to make up. Oh no. This was the lady from the park. Oh! Oh god! Oh god! Oh my god! Is that gun gonna have a silver bullet? Ah! Uh? He's just tearing at her flesh. Oh my god, that's horrible. Oh my god. Don't werewolves usually like bite their prey or like attack them? This guy just seemed like he wanted to uh, kill her. From the detective division to off Joe. Well, I waited till he hung up. He looks familiar as well, the sheriff. Uh, it's gonna bug me, frick. What are you, trying to be smart? Now you boys- The bat's called the peacemaker, ha ha ha. 
Now, who's drinking? That's a pretty cool wheelchair, like motorized. That's awesome. Hey, it's Madman Marty in the Silver Bullet. Hey, that's the name of the movie. And he's in a doghouse with my mom. For getting a divorce? Well, it is, it's third. I hope this uh, scene doesn't go the way of Mac and me. That wheelchair is giving me flashbacks. I'm on my way to laundry. Well, I would go take a look myself, but I think the bullet gets stuck in the mud. Oh my. So brave. Tama! Tama! Bring him with me. Is this young Tanny from Tanny and the T Rex? Always end up on welfare. Says the guy drinking in the middle of the day. It sounds like a lawnmower almost. Like that's the first thing that came to mind. And yeah, if his uncle like switched out the muffler. Oh, his wheelchair's called the silver bullet. Okay. Want me to check the oil? Yeah, sure. Wipe the windshield and check the <laughs> Yeah, I think Stephen King does a good job of making, like, the characters more than one-sided. Like, he makes them dynamic. I am scared to death that someday he is just gonna give up. He's not gonna give up! Well, he doesn't need you showing him how to do it! Yeah, I feel like this Uncle Red doesn't want to believe... Well, night here at Sister Nance. ...believe that he's in a wheelchair, he's just kind of, like, ignoring it. Or maybe he's just trying to show that there's more to him than being in a wheelchair, which is probably the first thing people notice about him, and... Might be all they know about him, so. Oh, he's under the floorboards? I'm also very impressed with this greenhouse situation. But that's terrifying! Troll 2, the plants are alive. Oh, shoot, what are we doing? Oh, see you later! Oh! It's not even the werewolf that kills him, it's the world's biggest splinter. Cheese and crackers. Manic claims another victim. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, the body count's getting up there, man. We just started, and that's our third one. Those sideburns, though. Oh my. I just had like flashbacks to another Stephen King movie where a blonde child was playing near a road. Ah, uh, not Pet Cemetery. Marty, it's getting late. Why did he seem so mad that kid was flying his kite still? I don't know. This whole investigation has been about as efficient as a submarine with screen doors. <laughs> I love that one. Yes, our solar powered flashlight. Oh, Come on. Has, has anybody in here seen my son, Brady? What? No. They got Brady? Oh, God. Of course, there's a smiley face with blood covered on it. Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Ah, frick, what is his name? <laughs> Not Brady, no. And the time of the beast always passes. Well, eventually it'll go back to being a regular moon and not a full moon, so you're not wrong. Bob James, see the house. All right. Come on. How do you feel? He's like, well, yeah, my best friend was just murdered. And yeah, like, it's obviously a very horrible and, like, graphic death. Like, it's not like they were shot or something. Like, how do you chase down whatever this is? Because they don't know what it is, so. I think about solving this case. Yeah. We'll catch him. You couldn't catch a cold. <laughs> so lame, but I love it. Wouldn't it be one of the town's people? Maybe they just don't know it? Because, I mean, every movie is different, but sometimes the lore of werewolves is that they don't remember what they've done. They wake up somewhere new, and it's just kind of like, why? how did I get here? Yeah, I think they're doing a good job of showing, like, how a town would respond. Like, you've got people who are, you know, taking the law into their own hands, basically, and 
trying to figure out what's going on. Especially with this is like the fourth, that would have been the fourth kill in like four days, basically. Ah! You gotta help me. Oh, he stepped in a bear trap, didn't he? Yep. Oh, I felt that. Oh, God, that's awful. Ah! Oh, me. Ah, Yo! No, he's not okay, you goof. Oh! Twice! You had one job, man! One job! This poor guy! I'm gonna go through here. You follow me one at a time. I'm right behind you. My guess is that it's the Reverend, only because we've seen him sporadically, and it's usually the character that you see the least of that turns out to be the villain in the end, so... That's my guess, but we will find out. Maybe it's someone who's not from this town at all. Maybe they just pick this town because they don't want to actually attack where they live. I have no idea, but uh, it hasn't been my favorite Stephen King so far, but I'm curious to see where it's going to go. And what happens when this thing takes out the entire town that are out searching for him? Oh, man. It's right here with us. Terrifying. Fog always makes things creepier. Oh, God! Bye! Whoa! One down. You all, you all just walked into his trap. Oh, God, his face! My God! Run! Oh! Oh my, bonked him. I don't think a baseball bat's any match for a werewolf, but you know, good effort. Oh, now he's got it! Now you're doomed! He's using your own weapon against you! So many bonks. Oh my gosh. Just a mass funeral now for all these guys who tried to be brave. That's so creepy. It's giving me like Wicker Man vibes. Everybody's just swaying back and forth, this unblinking stare and singing. Very small. Reverend, he was torn apart! Oh, God! What? Oh, my God. They're all werewolves now? Whoa, 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 whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Is this real? The whole town? <laughs> Shut the front door! Oh my god! This better not be a dream sequence or something. I was wondering, I was like, the werewolf doesn't seem to be making new werewolves. He just seems to be like killing them. Oh, he's back from the dead. Ferociously playing that organ. Okay, well, you know what? I was like, this is gonna be what a twist! The whole town has become werewolves! And they get you with the dream sequence. Frick. Let it end, dear God, let it end. Was I right? Is he the werewolf? Or is he just hoping this chaos stops? I don't know how big this town is, but the population is dropping. Cover your eyes. Oh, shit. I've been busting my ass on this deal. Is it gonna be something dangerous? Um. Uncle Red seems like a bit of a loose cannon. Ta da! <laughs> I don't know why that was. Maybe it's just like his voice. It just. Do you hear him say that? I was not expecting it. Shut the front door! That is badass! Absolutely, it is. Best uncle ever. Hell yes. It is racing stripes! Red? Hey! Hey, Red. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I was just creeping around you. Yeah, no big deal. Just <laughs> so weird. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. I feel like a virgin on prom night. Oh, my. Here's how you started. Maybe not the metaphor you wanted to go with. And you remember what I told you? Yeah. Now be damn careful. Okay. How you started? It is a motorcycle, basically. Yeah, give him a helmet or something. Sounds good, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you ready? <laughs> oh my god, yes! This kid just became the coolest kid around. Whoa, he's doing wheelies! 
How fast can this thing go? Comment below, like, how they made this. Like, what, did they have a stunt driver? Did they actually let uh, this kid tear it up? Oh, God. Okay. Why don't you walk me around my car? Walk me around my car and see if I can stay out of trouble that long. He's doing it, like, I'm enjoying his performance so far. It's like this goofy, but also somewhat reckless and dangerous, lovable uncle. You're going to have Fourth of July, but you're going to have it in September. Just what every kid wants, fireworks. Oh my gosh. Watch out for the werewolf. Bye. Oh man, the foreshadowing is freaking me out. Oh. The werewolf can't get Marty, come on. He's like, I hate fireworks. I hope we get to see his like full werewolf costume. We've only seen like a hand and a quick shot. Uh, like we saw his reflection in the water, but it'd be nice to have like that full reveal. Well, that's rude. The fishes won't appreciate that. Oh God, yeah, he sees him. He's gonna blast him with a rocket. Oh! Right in the nose! Or right in the eye! Oh god! Get out of there! Oh my god! You were right, but that's terrifying that he was accurate. Good thing that thing goes very fast. Cheese and rice. Right in the eye! Now won't there be someone wandering around town with an eye missing? Marty himself believed it all. Yeah, how's he gonna prove it now, I wonder? Or if he gets his sister to believe him, that's good. But like, what are they gonna try to do? Hello, Jane. And it's interesting how those read from Jane's perspective. I don't know if that's exactly how it is in the novel. I was wondering if you had any. I guess not. Thanks. Chatty bunch, all right, moving on. It's just my little brother gets me so mad sometimes. Well, Jane. I knew it. I knew it. Ah, oh, frick. Take your card on around to the garage, then bring me your tally sheet. And she won't notice. Because he just turned, the way he turned was the way where his good eye was showing. Ah, oh, frick, Jane, you were right. But now she's going to be like, I just saw everybody in town. And, you know, your theory doesn't hold, so. I'm curious if he knows that he's a werewolf. He definitely seemed like suspicious. And even when they were doing the sermon earlier, he mentioned the beast. And I was like, that seems like a, a weird thing to frame a reference to just go to right away. Oh, and he's got the bat. Why would he have that? Dun, 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 dun. And that explained why he had that dream of everybody turning into a werewolf. Oh no, Janie, get out of there! I think maybe I got too much sun. Well, would you like to come in the parlor and lie down? No, no, never in the parlor. No. Yeah, is, was he like targeting specific people? What are we gonna do? I think I know. Oh yes, the magazine cutout ransom note. Classic. What we'd been up to, his reaction was less than serene. Holy, jumped up ball headed Jesus, pal. <laughs> He's had some great lines. This performance by uh, Marty has been really good so far. Sometimes with child actors, you're kind of like, uh, but he's doing a really good job. Is he gonna run this kid off the road? Seriously? Oh my god, that's terrifying. Oh! <gasps> this guy's just a straight up murderer now. Of all the times to run out of gas.
That's a beautiful set, although incredibly dangerous because it's condemned. You believe that or not, but it's true. I would never willingly hurt a child. Then explain why he killed Brady. Religion teaches that suicide is the greatest sin a man or a woman can commit. But it's okay for you to kill like seven people a week. And if she had done so, she would be burning in hell right now. Okay, so he is picking them on purpose. Rich, help me! Please! Hey, you Marty? That was lucky. Oh man, for once somebody's actually there when you call for help. What color is Lowe's car? Blue. Oh, he's got the paint on his, yeah, silver bullet from where he hit him. Okay, can't prove he's a werewolf, but you might be able to prove that he tried to run you off the road. Would it still be a full moon at this point? So like the fifth or sixth night? But it's not my fault! Oh, God. Are we going to get the transformation scene? Yes! There we go! His teeth are coming in! Oh god, yes! Oh! Bonked him! So rude! His head's literally split open! Oh my god! Okay! Oh! Bonked him again! He loves that bat! Cheese and rice! Oh god! I want you to turn this into a silver bullet. Hey, that's the name of the movies. Almost all the time. Only as the moon gets fuller, the guy gets full fear. Okay, interesting. Take mine too. So yeah, it doesn't have to be just a full moon. Old world craftsman. A sort of wizard of weapons. Seems like a good guy to know. And though they differed on several minor points, they all agreed on one. I thought silver bullets could kill vampires as well. Made out of silver. How about a werewolf? Oh, shoot. So everybody knows? At least it seemed like a coincidence. Remember, we'll be at the closet. And I got the number. Right. <laughs> I love that this is going to like end on Halloween. That's awesome. What does a werewolf dress up for Halloween? Does he need a costume? You know? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, listen, you kids go to bed early. You're going to hurt your head popping it in and out. <laughs> yeah, all right. Like they're gonna go to bed early on Halloween. Yeah, all right, man. Do they really just play the national anthem on TV like that? Or maybe they used to, I guess. Oh shoot. And so are you. What happens if I say no? Then I'm gonna kick your ass. That's rude. Ah, he's outside. Oh shoot. There, I saw him. I know you did, Janie. Why don't you just go upstairs? Oh, shoot! There goes the power. Put that bullet back in there. Oh, put that bullet back in there. Oh, God. Oh, come on. Slow motion grab. Come on. Seriously? Woo, bye. Flying Uncle Red. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, bonked him. Oh my god, again, he's just tossing him, breaking every mirror in the house. Go! Oh, he's got like a marble under there. Oh, bonked him. Why did he take it out of the gun? Come on! Come on, Marty, now's your chance! Oh! Right in his other eye! Oh my gosh! I love these transformation scenes. They're definitely my favorite part of werewolf movies. I like the sound of like bones cracking and stuff. Ugh. Yeah, like the little details with the hair and everything. Holy, I'm Jeff Jesus, pal of man. God. His face looks like gray almost. 
Remember that Halloween we saved uh, our town from a werewolf? So that was my first time watching the 1985 Stephen King adaptation Silver Bullet. Uh, we saw that the title of the movie has a different name from the title of the book. So comment below, is this book completely different from the film? I haven't read the book. So yeah, comment below and let me know. It definitely wasn't my favorite Stephen King adaptation, but I love seeing how different versions of werewolf lore or vampire lore or whatever the creature is will be interpreted. And this one, it seemed like the werewolf was able to consciously choose who he was attacking which was interesting it seemed like this reverend was going after people who he felt like he needed to save their soul and that's why he chose them although I'm not sure how Brady falls into that category but uh, it was just interesting that that's what is like more of like a cognitive choice and that he changed into a werewolf even when there wasn't a full moon, the way they kind of explained it was the more it gets closer to the full moon, the less human he becomes and the more wolfy he becomes. So that was interesting. I suspected the Reverend at the beginning just because from watching other movies, they usually set it up where it's a character you don't see very often. It's usually not a main character. And we were able to rule out other people when we see Marty shoot that rocket into the werewolf's eye. And then he calls Uncle Red and Uncle Red's at home. So you're like, okay, clearly it's not him. And then we we find out it is the reverend when Jane goes over to collect those bottles and the way she goes through the entire town and it's just like no like Marty's lying he's making this up and she feels like an idiot for believing him and I also like how they told the story from her perspective instead of Marty's perspective um, and then we find out that he's got the eye patch and it is him from other Stephen King adaptations that I've seen I love how he makes everybody like a dynamic character and he includes like the whole town I've seen that in like Salem's Law and Pet Cemetery and other Stephen King movies as well and we see that in this with you know the vigilante justice the whole town is banding together and I think that just adds to the story and it really just makes the audience feel like you live here like you're just part of this community now obviously we had our main characters but that he includes the whole town and just really gives you that sense of how the town would respond to a situation like this that there's a werewolf on the loose and it seems like some of the townspeople are even suspecting that this is the case especially when the body count starts to climb very rapidly. I think there was seven or eight people who died from the werewolf. And when we see Uncle Red in the gun shop and the gun shop owner is like, oh, is this for a werewolf? Like, it seems like this is something that's crossed their mind. And especially considering the way the bodies have been found, like it's an animal attack. And depending on what you believe, I guess maybe you'd be open to the concept of a werewolf. It didn't seem like he was intent on turning more people into werewolves. I know that's usually the case when they bite a victim then that person becomes a werewolf as well it just seemed like he was going out there to kill and to kill these people he thought that their souls needed to be saved we don't find out how the reverend became a werewolf maybe like they said he doesn't know like i said it's usually when someone is bit so maybe he was bitten by a werewolf at some point i'm not sure if that's further explained in the book or anything but it would have been interesting to learn more about his backstory has he been in this town a long time does he move towns or i wasn't even sure if it would be somebody from from this town because if they know they're turning into a werewolf would they you know choose to kill somewhere else and sometimes they don't even know that they're a werewolf so yeah it's always interesting to see the different variations of what lore they will choose to include and won't the transformation scenes are always my favorite part of werewolf movies we didn't get to see a ton of it in this one and I'm not sure if that was because of the budget or I'd rather have a really short scene than a really long drawn out scene that looks terrible I feel like the werewolf head they put a lot of detail into that and that looked really good we didn't really get to see a ton of full werewolf you know suit shots there was a couple but they were very like a couple frames like they were very very quick I would have had to like pause the movie to really get a look at it so again that could have been for budget reasons and like I said I'd rather have them show us less and show us well done uh, special effects than to show us everything and it looks not great when we had the scene at the end when he's transforming back into a human they did show us a little bit more but again it was like a hand 
hand, a foot, um, and I like that they show the little details of the hair and the nails and all those things, but when they pulled back and we could see the Reverend's face starting to come through, he looked really gray. I don't know if that was on purpose, if that was just the werewolf's like skin tone transferring back into like his human skin tone. It just, that for me kind of put me out of it. When they had the close-ups of the face and everything though, I thought it looked really cool, but again, very short and we don't even really see him until definitely the third act. He's just kind of like hiding in the bushes or hiding, you know, under the water or in the fog or under the greenhouse floor. And we just have the quick flashes of the eyes and he had the red colored eyes again. And then of course we see Marty go straight for the eyes twice where he shoots him with a rocket and then shoots him with a silver bullet. I like that it was Marty who was able to finally take down the werewolf because I feel like this had been his, you know, journey the whole time. He's convincing people there's a werewolf out there. Like it was nice to see him finally, you know, close this chapter and how him and Jane were actually like close as far as siblings go. I like that they made that the case instead of having them constantly fight all the time. We did have some scenes at the beginning, obviously at the picnic when she slips in the mud, but then, you know, Marty is very sweet and offers to, you know, buy her the replacement stockings that were ruined. I like that Stephen King just has such an understanding of characters and you know suburban life and just even like the way the bartender has this baseball bat called the peacemaker and just all those little details I think just make his stories so rich and I definitely need to read some more of his books I haven't read any so I definitely need to uh, get on that I don't know if there are sequels or remakes or anything like that comment below and let me know I really enjoyed the performances by Uncle Red and uh, Marty and Jane uh, Jane was in a Canadian series called uh Anne of Green Gables in the 80s. If you like Anne of Green Gables, I would check that out. I know Corey Haim was in a bunch of 80s movies as well. The Lost Boys, um, which I really enjoyed. I watched that a while ago. And the guy who plays Uncle Red, I've definitely recognized his name, but I can't remember what else I've seen him in. But I thought he was great. He definitely added some comic relief to this and just the way that he would speak to the kids. I was like, I remember hearing adults talk to kids that way. Like you're on thin ice and just like, that felt very realistic to the time, even though the film was taking place in 1976, I believe. And it just came out in the eighties. I felt like the way he was talking to kids, to me, it felt very eighties. And this character of uncle red, I thought was great. Cause at first you're like, okay, is he this reckless uncle? We hear the mom talking about how he drinks too much. And you're like, okay, is he going to just be this bad influence on him? And, but he definitely, felt like he had more than one layer and treated Marty and Jane like they were his own kids. We don't know if he had kids of his own. It also kind of reminded me of Uncle Buck in some ways where he was like taking care of these kids and might not have been the greatest influence but might have had good intentions like when he gets Marty fireworks and when he builds him this like high speed motorcycle which was for the record the coolest thing ever. Could you imagine getting that as a kid? That would be so cool. Like I know Marty obviously needs a wheel wheelchair to get around but still he just made this kid like the most badass motorcycle wheelchair hybrid it had flames on it he put his name silver bullet on the back like there's no way marty's not going to feel cool riding that thing around and we see him even sneaking out late at night to go for like a joy ride just so fun like you could definitely feel the bond between the uncle and marty it was interesting to have this werewolf character that wasn't conflicted about being a werewolf i feel like every other werewolf werewolf movie I've seen the character dreads the full moon and is like oh no like I don't want to go out there and hurt people like I don't want this transformation to happen and it's also usually a very painful process for that person so or they don't even remember what's happening after and they wake up somewhere new like we saw in American Werewolf in London I feel like the reverend was definitely enjoying this ability the fact that he could transform and basically gave him a free pass to go on a killing spree and to kill people that he felt like you know their souls need to be saved but then also also when he was a human or maybe that's when he was like 90% wolf and 10% human at that point when he's driving around trying to run Marty off the road and I was like you're not a werewolf right now but then when they explain at the end like it doesn't need to be a full moon maybe that's what they were going for it was interesting to have a character that 
wanted to have these werewolf abilities and wanted to use them to his advantage. Overall, I enjoyed it. Like I said, I don't think it's my favorite Stephen King adaptation, but it was still enjoyable to watch. I love that this big showdown happened on Halloween. That just adds another spooky element to it. How Marty sends the Reverend, you know, these magazine later cutouts and his ransom note or his note saying like, basically, we know who you are, you know, leave town kind of thing. I love how we got the whole town incorporated and how we find out who the werewolf was. I wasn't sure if they were ever going to tell us. I wish the transformation scenes would have been a little bit stronger, but it was still definitely not the worst thing I've ever seen. Comment below if there are sequels, if you think I should watch those. But thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for horror movies you think I should watch, please comment below. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. Decapitations right off the start. The bat's called the peacemaker. It's not even the werewolf that kills him. It's the world's biggest splinter. Why did he seem so mad that kid was flying his kite still? Well, yeah, my best friend was just murdered. Ferociously playing that organ. Just whatever kid wants. Fireworks. Right in the eye. No, never in the parlor. Do they really just play the national anthem on TV like that? 